Welcome to lecture series on advanced geotechnical engineering and we are discussing module 4 and which is on the shear strength of soils. In the previous lecture we introduced ourselves to different types of triaxial test they are namely consolidated undrained triaxial test, consolidated drained triaxial test, unconsolidated undrained triaxial test and unconfined compression test. And we have also discussed that you know there is a several other possibilities also with the triaxial test wherein we can also perform this extension test in order to measure the tensile strength extension characteristics of a soil or tensile strength of a soil. So we are you know discussing about the stress paths in triaxial and thereafter we will introduce ourselves to octahedral plane and more coulomb condition and thereafter we will discuss about how we can actually determine elastic modulus from the triaxial test. So before looking into the you know the discussion let us take an example problem wherein the problem reads like this a drain triaxial compression test is carried out on a sample of soil known to have the effective strength effective stress strength you know characteristics as you know effective stress parameters and they are basically c dash is equal to 10 kilo pascals and phi dash is equal to 22 degrees. If the cell pressure is 100 kilo pascals and draw the Mohr stress circle at failure and evaluate the you know failure values of T S dash Q and P dash and draw the you know the stress paths on both T S dash and Q P dash diagrams. So and what are the slopes of the stress paths evaluate K dash or A and alpha dash or psi. So we should actually you know refer here that there are two types of you know parameters composite stress parameters one is actually put forwarded by MIT group and Cambridge group and both the groups actually have used unfortunately same term you know symbols they are Q and P. So for convenience here Q is also defined as T and P is also defined as S. So as far as the, the composite stress parameters definition uh, uh, such as the deviator stress and mean effective stress are widely they are basically widely used in soil mechanics and in the course of the lectures also uh, here and there we have used both MIT group and Cambridge group uh, uh, you know Q and P symbols but here we are uh, distinguishing uh, with MIT group and Cambridge group. Uh, the symbols put forward by MIT group and Cambridge group where T is equal to T dash means uh, that is nothing but uh, uh, you know sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 which is uh, equal to Q uh, to the original uh, uh, you know definition put forward by uh, MIT group S is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2. So in case of S is equal to S dash is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma sigma 1 dash plus sigma 3 dash by 2 but in case of Q it is Q is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 is equal to T and whereas the Cambridge group if you look into it it is P is equal to 1 by third of sigma 1 plus 2 sigma 3 by 1 by 1 by third of sigma 1 plus 2 sigma 3 where P dash is equal to one third of sigma 1 dash plus 2 sigma 3 dash. So Q is equal to Q dash is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 according to Cambridge group definition of composite stress parameters. Now uh, from the given data the cell pressure was actually given as 100 kilo Pascals and uh, the soil actually was found to have uh, you know has been given as the Mohr Coulomb failure envelope was given in the problem. So what we have done is that we have uh, uh, drawn the uh, Mohr Coulomb failure envelope and on the y axis that is the tau and the x axis it is sigma dash. So here uh, this uh, you know ordinate is uh, 10 kilo Pascals which is the uh, you know the cohesion ordinate and the 22 degrees is the friction angle. Now you know for the uh, we know that the sigma 3 is 100 kilo Pascals that is actually at this point it is given. Now what we do is that the radius of the stress circle at failure can be obtained like this. So radius is nothing but 
the radius of the uh, circle is nothing but uh, uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, you know if you take this triangle if you take this triangle uh, you know which is nothing but 10 cot 22 uh, 10 cot 22 plus 100 plus uh, r uh, you know sin 22 so if you take this one the radius is actually obtained here and once uh, the radius is obtained with this as the center and with this is one of the points the more uh, you know uh, circle actually is drawn and uh, sigma 1 f can be obtained as 100 is the sigma 3 so 100 plus 2 r that is you know uh, you know the radius 2 times radius we get the sigma 1 dash f that is the major principal stress at failure and uh, once we get the major principal stress at failure uh, you know this uh, s dash f can be obtained as uh, that is nothing but sigma 3 uh, plus sigma uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 which is nothing but 100 plus r which is about 174.7 kilo pascals and the q of is nothing but q of is nothing but 2 r is equal to 149.4 kilo pascals q of is nothing but uh, you know that is uh, sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 into 2 so because q is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 so r is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 so what we have done is that q of is equal to 2 r is equal to 149.4 kilo pascals and p dash of is equal to one third of uh, we know that uh, this uh, uh, sigma 1 dash uh, which is 174.7 plus 2 into 100 you know with this uh, what we get is that that is uh, uh, sigma 1 dash uh, is uh, nothing but 249.4 so sigma 1 dash is nothing but 249.4 plus 2 into 100 we will get the p dash so uh, p uh, so according to the problem we have been asked to determine uh, q dash and p dash that is according to the cambridge group we have de de determined like this q is q of is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 and p dash of is equal to one third of sigma 1 dash f sigma 1 dash f is nothing but 100 plus 2 r so this is this point plus uh, 2 into 100 we we got this one okay now what we actually uh, next we have said is that we can actually get the uh, you know the stress paths uh, you know we have been asked to draw the stress path for uh, you know ps and uh, you know uh, qp dash so for both the things uh, here one uh, we have been given that uh, these these are the this is p dash and this is uh, q and this we know that this slope is actually will be 3 to 1 uh, 3 1 so the q is 149.8 kilo pascals that is you know 149.8 kilo pascals that is this one 149.4 that is here it is plotted here and this is 100 you know up to the you know that is the cell pressure which is applied so it traverses from here to here to failure similarly when we take t is equal to q is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 s is equal to p is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 so this traverses like uh, you know uh, 100 plus uh, you know this is nothing but sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 so this can be obtained like this this is nothing but 174.7 kilo pascals so that is indicated here so the slope of this uh, you know is uh, 1 so uh, the, uh, the 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 t failure is around 74.7 kilo pascals and this is nothing but uh, 174.7 kilo pascals so it can be seen that T s dash stress path has a slope of 1 is to 1 and Q p dash stress path has a slope of 3 is to 1. So T s you know with the, with the MIT group definition the, the stress path actually has a slope of 1 is to 1 with Cambridge group definition of Q and p dash it is 3 is to 1. Now we have been asked to determine K dash and uh, you know uh, uh, k dash and uh, alpha dash so we know that uh, we have a relationship between uh, kf line and uh, mohr coulomb failure envelope uh, when we have the q and p and when we have the tau and sigma uh, when we compare uh, the from the geometry of the two circles we can actually uh, we have uh, derived that sin pi dash is equal to tan psi is equal to tan alpha dash and uh, where c is equal to uh, you know this ordinate c is equal to a uh, the by a or k dash by cos phi dash so by comparison from here from the uh, two circles we can get k uh, k dash is equal to from this equation k dash is equal to uh, 
10 that is you know C is given as 10 kilopascals 10 cos 22 that is around 9.3 kilopascals. So that means that we are actually getting that A or K dash as 9.3 kilopascals in, in Q and P you know Q and P space and tan alpha dash is equal to tan psi is equal to sin phi. So sin phi dash is given as sin 22 uh, phi dash is 22 degrees. So tan alpha dash is equal to sin 22 degrees which is nothing but alpha dash is equal to 20.5 degrees. So, so this alpha dash is equal to psi is equal to the inclination of the uh, you know kf line is uh, 20.5 degrees. So like this you know we one need to uh, you know uh, you know look into the same for getting uh, the uh, you know different parameters at failure uh, from the the basic data which is actually deduced from the uh, you know the traction test. Now let us consider the consolidated drained uh, uh, test and the stress paths and uh, when we have the isotropic consolidation the constant isotropic stress that means that uh, we have got uh, equal stress in vertical and horizontal direction. Then in that case the Mohr circle is uh, nothing but uh, a point. Uh, where uh, the sample of soil under isotropic stress basically has a Mohr circle uh, of 0 radius. So it is nothing but uh, when we have uh, a sample of soil uh, under the isotropic uh, uh, stress conditions uh, the, Mohr, the Mohr stress circle uh, has 0 radius and which is nothing but a point. So uh, A is nothing but the total stress point and A dash is nothing but effective stress point and uh, here for the sample consolidated at constant confining stress the stress path is a single point with u is equal to 0 and sigma f is equal to sigma r dash sigma r is equal to sigma r dash at the end of consolidation. So this is the initial state of stress at the application of the you know stress sigma 3 then you know the Mohr circle will be a point that we have discussed now you know when the stress traverses to uh, along the line with the tau is equal to 0. So this increment in pressure is carried by the uh, pore water itself the increment in pressure is carried by the pore water itself. So it actually traverses along the sigma line or sigma dash line and further uh, you know once at the end of the consolidation the pore water pressure uh, you know dissipates. So if the uh, you know in the increment of pressure is actually carried by the pore water pressure is uh, here and once they at the end of the consolidation that uh, u delta u actually dissipates. Uh, so if, uh, if if the total stress increment delta sigma is now removed that stress paths will be reversed in the opposite direction. So uh, it has actually traverses like this but if the, trust, if, the trust, if the total stress increment delta sigma is now is removed that stress paths will be reversed. So triaxial test is restricted as the cell pressure uh, must be equal to the minor or major principal stress. And, uh, wide range of stress paths are possible because of axial and radial pressure uh, can be varied independently and uh, you know axial and radial pressures may be increased or decreased or held constant. So with that you know uh, what we are actually deliberating is that you know number of uh, types of tests which are possible and can lead to different uh, stress paths. So the CD test with the drained triaxial stress paths compression uh, where, con uh, where uh, constant isotropic uh, total stress. So here delta sigma r is equal to 0 compression where constant axial stress is 0 that is delta sigma a is equal to 0 and uh, you know then extension the con constant isotropic total stress where delta sigma r is equal to 0 and extension where constant uh, uh, you know axial stress where delta sigma a is equal to 0. So possible combination of drain loading in triaxial sample are discussed here. Now let us consider the drained compression the constant uh, isotropic stress that delta sigma r that means that the change in uh, radial stress is 0 delta sigma r is actually is 0. So in a drain triaxial test sigma a is equal to sigma dash a and the sigma r is equal to sigma r dash so and then u is equal to 0 this is because the pore water pressure dissipation is 0. So delta sigma a, da, a dash is equal to delta sigma a, uh, a so delta, sig, delta sigma a dash is equal to delta sigma a a dash which is positive and delta sigma r dash is equal to 0. So uh, uh, if you look into this delta t is equal to delta tau is equal to delta tau is equal to uh, 
delta sigma a minus delta sigma r that is nothing but delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3 by 2. So if you look into this here delta sigma r is equal to 0 with that you know what we have get is that delta sigma a by a dash by 2 and this is delta tau is equal to delta a dash by 2 and when you have delta s dash is equal to delta sigma dash then delta sigma dash is equal to delta sigma a dash that is nothing but a delta sigma 1 dash plus delta sigma r dash which is nothing but delta sigma 3 dash divided by 2. So with the delta sigma r dash is equal to 0 uh, what we have got is that this delta sigma a dash by 2. So the slope of this one delta tau delta tau by delta sigma dash is nothing but the positive that is nothing but if you, they get cancelled then delta tau by delta sigma dash is equal to plus 1. So only the stress which changes is uh, sigma a dash by an amount delta sigma a dash that is nothing but the actual stress is actually increase and uh, the rest everything delta sigma r uh, which is sigma r dash is equal to 0 and in the drained stress path compression constant isotropic stress um, where delta sigma r is equal to 0 and with that uh, you know the pore water pressure dissipation uh, both during uh, both during the shearing is uh, 0. So this is uh, can be indicated uh, whatever we have deliberated with uh, drained compression with constant isotropic stress with delta sigma r is equal to 0 uh, with compression on the upper, uh, upper axis and extension below. So and uh, sigma and sigma dash axis here. So m is that uh, point where initial stress point and then uh, what we have said is that uh, uh, you know the stress path actually traverses to m to p m p and uh, the slope of this line is delta sigma by delta uh, sigma delta sau, delta tau by delta sigma dash is equal to positive 1. So there is nothing but uh, because of this deliberation what we have discussed here in the in this slide uh, the, the slope of this line is uh, uh, you know uh, 1 the slope of this line is the 1 vertical 1 horizontal uh, 1 vertical 1 horizontal and this is the kf line this is the kf line. So if you look into this the stress path is, uh, is a straight line with the slope 1 is to 1 that is actually 45 degrees fa failing at point P. So the slope is actually meeting the kf line at point P. So mp is the stress path is a straight line with slope 1 is to 1 failing at point P. Now drain compression constant axial stress that means that here delta sigma a dash is equal to 0 that means that there is no change in the axial stress. So here uh, what we have got is that uh, uh, you know the only stress uh, which changes is delta sigma r dash uh, by an amount delta uh, sigma r dash that means that we are actually increasing let us say delta sigma r dash. So delta sigma a dash is equal to 0 and uh, delta uh, sigma r dash is equal to minus uh, delta sigma dash. So uh, uh, delta tau is nothing but delta sigma a dash minus of minus delta sigma r dash by 2 uh, with that uh, you know what we get is the delta sigma r dash by 2 and uh, delta sigma dash is equal to uh, delta sigma r dash a plus minus of delta sigma r dash by 2. So with that uh, what we get is that delta sigma a dash is equal to 0. So with that what we get is that uh, uh, minus delta sigma r dash by 2. So when we have uh, let us say the sample delta sigma a dash is equal to 0 and when you keep on increasing uh, delta sigma delta uh, you know delta sigma r dash the sample experiences uh, uh, you know the delta sigma delta tau by delta sigma dash is equal to the, the slope will be uh, you know the is uh, you know minus 1. So that means that uh, you know uh, one uh, vertical minus one horizontal you can see here. So in this case uh, when they when you have the constant axial stress delta sigma a dash is equal to 0 that means that there is a constant axial stress and if the stresses are initial isotropic uh, the resulting stress path is given as MR that is that if the result, MR is the uh, resulting stress path uh, which is actually uh, you know uh, which has actually got a delta tau by delta sigma dash is equal to minus 1 with k0 is equal to 1. Now drained extension the constant isotropic stress where delta sigma r dash is equal to 0 that means that uh, here in the drain triaxial test sigma a is equal to sigma a dash and sigma r is equal to sigma r dash and u is equal to 0. So here the only stress which changes is sigma r dash uh, by an amount uh, delta sigma r dash. So uh, uh, you know the only stress which actually changes is delta uh, uh, sigma r dash by an amount delta sigma r dash. So uh, in this case. Uh, uh, delta sigma r dash is equal to 0 that is uh, uh, and then delta sigma a delta sigma a dash is equal to minus uh, delta sigma a dash and delta tau is equal to minus uh, delta sigma a dash minus delta sigma r dash by 2 
and uh, with uh, delta sigma r dash is equal to 0 uh, what we get is the delta tau is equal to minus uh, delta uh, sigma a by 2 and uh, delta sigma dash is equal to um, with uh, delta sigma r dash is equal to 0 what we get is that uh, minus delta sigma a dash by 2. So uh, delta uh, tau by delta sigma dash is equal to plus 1. So if you look into this here what we have got is the delta tau is equal to minus and delta tau delta sigma dash is equal to also minus. So the stress path is here mq is a simple extension of the corresponding compression test mp into the extension stress zone. So here the delta tau by delta sigma dash is equal to positive but they have one with <coughs> minus one vertical minus one horizontal and towards the extension side. So mq is the simple extension of the corresponding compression test mp into the extension stress zone. So for the drained extension the uh, you know the constant isotropic stress is delta uh, sigma r dash is equal to 0 is actually given as uh, the stress path mq is a simple extension of the corresponding compression test mp into the uh, extension stress zone. That means that we actually have discussed uh, you know uh, the this one which is uh, in the compression test and this is actually resulting in the uh, you know uh, in the extension zone. Now we have another case that drained extension the constant actual stress delta s sigma a dash is equal to 0 and uh, where uh, you know delta sigma a dash is equal to 0 where delta sigma r dash is equal to plus delta sigma r dash. So delta tau is equal to delta sigma a dash minus delta sigma r by 2 where with uh, delta sigma a dash is equal to 0 uh, delta sigma a dash is equal to 0. So what we have is that uh, uh, you know minus delta sigma r by 2 and delta tau dash is equal to delta sigma a dash plus delta sigma r dash by 2 uh, with delta sigma a dash is equal to 0 what we get is that delta sigma r dash by 2 with uh, the slopes delta tau by delta sigma dash which is nothing but minus 1 uh, nothing but minus 1. So the only stress which actually changes is uh, uh, you know sigma r dash by an amount uh, delta sigma dash. Uh, with what uh, here delta sigma a dash the axial stress is actually not changed. So with that what actually we get is that the stress path ms is a simple extension of the corresponding compression stress path mr that is what we have indicated like this into the extension stress zone. So this is uh, nothing but the uh, where delta sigma delta tau by delta sigma dash is equal to delta tau by delta sigma dash is equal to minus 1 delta tau by delta sigma dash is equal to minus 1 with for a k0 is equal to 1 condition but this is for isotropic case. So uh, we actually have seen uh, you know the various stress paths but in this particular slide a simple uh, isotropic uh, compression stress path is actually shown we said that it actually traverses along uh, T s dash that is s dash line and uh, when you have got 1D consolidation one dimensional consolidation where uh, you know there is only vertical strain and sigma epsilon r is equal to 0 axis symmetric uh, case where you have that k0 line is uh, like this this is the k0 line. So this is uh, you know on this uh, the uh, you know the one day consolidation actually happens but you know when you have uh, you know let us say for a direct shear test you know when the direct shear test when you when you draw initially uh, you know this uh, ab uh, is actually very similar as uh, similar as the k0 line. So it traverses from A to B uh, you know because you know we uh, in dry shear test what we do is that uh, initially there is uh, you know uh, some vertical stress is actually applied and uh, before commencement and before coming uh, shear there is elastic equilibrium or K0 condition is established. So AB is the you know along uh, you know the K0 line. So there is a point B where you know the, when the shear started you know what you can see is that BC is the path which actually takes the stress path which actually takes in direct shear test uh, during shearing. So indicating that uh, the uh, you know the tau added to the sample horizontally uh, does not change uh, you know yes uh, uh, does not change uh, basically yes but just uh, only t will change that what you see is that the t is changing but yes, uh, the sh uh, what, what is actually happening is that uh, the uh, uh, it only the t changes s will not change that means that a, the, the line traverses vertically upwards this is in case of a uh, you know direct shear test. So in reality uh, basically s may increase uh, 
uh, slightly due to the positive passive pressures which are actually developed at the uh, sample lens in the upper portion of the sample. So that means that indicating that the tau added to the sample uh, uh, you know horizontally does not change. Uh, so this figure which is actually the stress path which is actually shown indicates that uh, you know uh, the tau which is actually subjected to the sample you know uh, it does not change horizontally with uh, yes but uh, only the t is actually changing. So in reality yes may be subjected to uh, slight increase due to you know passive pressure uh, developed by the, the sample uh, ends in the upper part. So this is actually one of the limitations uh, of the Dirichlet test this we have discussed earlier. Now when you have got the triaxial compression and extension test what we have discussed is that either with uh, one vertical one horizontal 45 degrees uh, case or, or uh, in uh, this sign this is you know in the towards the compression side this is towards the extension. So this is shearing in compression and this is actually shearing in the uh, extension. So shearing in extension means how it comes. So AB isotropic consolidation, isotropic consolidation uh, is here and then you know when it actually uh, BC it actually changes from here that is uh, shearing in uh, the stress path BC is the shearing in compression and stress path BD is shearing in extension. So consolidated and undrained triaxial stress. So till now we have actually discussed about the stress paths for the consolidated drain test. So the uh, in the in case of uh, consolidated undrained triaxial test, what we have discussed is that uh, during consolidation the drainage is allowed, but during shear uh, the drainage is not allowed. So that there is a possibility of the build up of the pore water pressure. And then we also discussed that uh, depending upon the stress history and uh, the type of the soil deposit, like a loose sand or a dense sand or uh, normally consolidated clay or war consolidated clay. In case of loose sand and uh, normally consolidated clay there is a possibility that the pore water pressure excess pore water pressure developed during shear is positive and uh, when you have a dense sand and uh, or war consolidated clay uh, uh, you know the pore water pressure uh, developed uh, you know uh, is uh, in negative in nature that is uh, because of the phenomena of the dilation. So the isotropic consolidation uh, you know increasing isotropic the stress path for isotropic consolidation remains identically same in uh, both CD and the CU triaxial test for a isotropic compression case initially the both CD and CU they are actually one and the same. So uh, this we have discussed uh, so more in more circle actually initially a point uh, uh, you know with the 0 radius and uh, stress path travels us along the tau is equal to 0 this we have discussed during uh, uh, you know our discussion on the consolidated drain triaxial test. So this is at the end of dissipation of uh, pore water pressure uh, it actually uh, you know the, the stress of the, the sample increases by uh, delta sigma dash which is nothing but the amount of pore water pressure which is actually dissipated uh, during consolidation. Uh, and uh, here uh, they we have two cases one compression the constant uh, isotropic total stress delta sigma r dash is equal to 0 and constant axial total stress uh, where delta sigma a dash is equal to 0. So possible combinations of undrained loading on the triaxial test are uh, shown here where both are compression one is that constant isotropic total stress delta sigma r dash is equal to 0 there is no change in the radial stress and uh, in the other case is that there is no change in the uh, axial stress. So first case is that uh, you know the constant isotropic stress or delta sigma r dash is equal to 0 when you consider then we have uh, you know uh, you the, the slopes of the stress paths uh, in conventional and drained compression are found to be uh, by putting delta sigma r is equal to 0 and then with that we get uh, delta tau is equal to delta sigma a dash by 2 and uh, delta tau delta sigma is equal to delta sigma a by 2 and uh, then the ratio of delta sigma delta tau by delta sigma. Uh, is equal to 1. So the effective stress pass will be separated from the from by these uh, by pore water pressure value u at any time. So before uh, you know discussing the stress pass of uh, you know the uh, you know in case of consolidated and drain tra triaxial test uh, we should actually also uh, introduce ourselves to two parameters which are actually put forward by Skempton uh, they are called as uh, you know the Skempton's pore water pressure parameters. And uh, uh, like you know a, a simple way to estimate the pore water pressure change in undrained uh, loading in terms of total stress changes is actually given by Skempton 1954 and which is uh, given by an equation uh, delta u 
is equal to this is uh, uh, delta u is equal to b into delta sigma 3 plus a into delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3 a and b the both are called as skeptons uh, uh, a parameter a and b parameter. So b is a quotient indicating the level of saturation. So if b is equal to 0 is basically a dry soil and b is equal to 1 indicating that the soil is completely saturated and a is nothing but the excess pore water pressure quotient a is nothing but the excess pore water pressure quotient. So b is equal to 1 for saturated soils when you put b is equal to 1 uh, when b is equal to 1 uh, and then you know uh, delta u by uh, then, then we can actually write uh, uh, you, know, uh, the, you know a is equal to and a f is equal to uh, delta u by uh, delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3. So at failure at failure with uh, b is equal to 1 uh, we can write uh, a is equal to a f is equal to delta u by delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3. So uh, what we have done is that further this particular equation we have taken delta u is equal to b delta sigma 3 b into the brackets delta sigma 3 plus a into delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3. Let us divide this uh, entire Skempton equation by delta sigma 3. So what we get is like this delta u by delta sigma 3 is equal to uh, b uh, into 1 plus a by uh, 1 plus a into delta sigma 1 by delta sigma 3 minus 1 delta sigma 1 by delta. So Skempton's equation is very useful in determining whether the soil is saturated in axis axisymmetric uh, test. So during isotropic condition delta sigma 1 means delta sigma 3. Uh, so during isotropic condition delta sigma 1 is equal to delta sigma 3. So when you substitute in this uh, what we get is that b is equal to uh, delta u by uh, delta sigma 3 when b is equal to delta u by delta sigma 3. So uh, when during the isotropic consolidation we maintain the delta sigma 1 is equal to delta sigma 3. So with that you know when you substitute here delta u by delta sigma 3 is equal to b what we obtain. So for saturated soils b is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0 for dry soils. So a parameter at failure a f is nothing but for normally consolidated clays a r is equal to 1. So normally consolidated soils the a r will be equal to 1 and uh, for heavily ore consolidated soils a f will be negative that area the, the excess pore water pressure uh, coefficient at failure will be negative. So the b parameter basically is a function of saturation and a parameter is basically function of ore consolidation ratio. So ore consolidation ratio if it is high then it actually changes into a negative uh, if for really war consolidated clays that AF will be negative. So this particular table uh, which is actually gives uh, uh, you know uh, typical AF values for a heavily uh, highly sensitive soils uh, you know the 0 0.7 to 1 uh, and normally consolidated uh, soils uh, clays 0 0.5 to 1 and if you look into this compacted sandy clay that AF value is 0 0.25 to 0.75. And uh, lightly war consolidated clays actually have got 0 to 0.5, and compacted clay gravel has actually has got minus 0 0.25 to plus 0.25. Heavily war consolidated clays can actually go up to minus 0 0.5 to 0. So if you look into this here, when you the plot which is actually gives variation of AF with OCR, with increase in uh, OCR, uh, you can see that uh, here rate is uh, uh, 1, 2, and 3. So OCR actually more than 3 that is from OCR is equal to greater than 2 is said as lightly more than lightly or consolidated clays. So when you actually have got OCR in the value in the range of more than 3 the AF value will be negative. So this is actually you know that is the discussion we actually had earlier if you connect this is because of the, the negative pore water pressure development uh, which actually takes place in case of uh, uh, you know uh, during shear in case of uh, you know the war consolidated or densely, dense, uh, densely deposited soils. So the undrained uh, compression constant uh, isotropic stress now what we with the background of uh, the Skempton's pore water pressure parameters we actually write the pore water pressure equation again with uh, delta u is equal to b into delta sigma 3 plus a into delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3 and at failure uh, a is equal to 0.33 to 1 for normally conserved clay and uh, so for b is equal to 1 for saturated clay when you substitute here uh, what you get is that uh, delta u is equal to uh, a delta sigma 1 uh, plus delta sigma 3 we have taken common into minus 1, 1 minus a. So 
uh, here what we have got is that uh, delta sigma 3 into 1 minus a. Uh, so uh, here uh, delta u is equal to a delta sigma 1 plus uh, uh, delta sigma 3 uh, into 1 minus a. So delta sigma r is equal to 0 and delta tau is equal to delta sigma a by 2. So this is uh, you know uh, delta sigma r is equal to 0 there is no change in the uh, radial stress but delta tau is equal to delta sigma a by 2. So when you substitute this delta sigma a is nothing but uh, delta sigma a is equal to 2 into uh, you know delta uh, delta sigma a is equal to 2 into uh, delta tau. So when you put here uh, delta u is equal to a into uh, delta sigma 1 a into delta sigma 1 uh, with, the, the, with this when there is no change this becomes 0. So what we have is that delta u is equal to a into delta sigma 1. So delta sigma 1 uh, is substituted by 2 into uh, delta tau. So what you get is that delta u is equal to 2a delta tau 2a delta tau. So a is equal to 0 to 0.25 for heavily war consolidated place. Now further you know uh, you know this uh, uh, delta u is equal to a into delta sigma 1 is equal to 2a into delta delta tau and where if a is constant uh, during the test with the effective stress path this is a straight line uh, with the slope as um, you know delta tau uh, delta tau by delta sigma is equal to 1 1 by 1 minus 2a 1 by 1 minus 2a so here if you look into it uh, here you have got delta u by uh, delta sigma 1 which is nothing but 2a by delta sigma. So what we get is that uh, if, uh, the, if a is constant during the test uh, the effective stress path is a straight line uh, with the slope is nothing but uh, delta tau uh, divided by delta sigma dash is equal to 1 by 1 minus 2a. So this is nothing but the slope of the you know the stress path which is indicated in this uh, diagram. And uh, here, uh, uh, in case of the this is the total stress path, and uh, 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 this is the effective stress path. You can see that, and this difference is actually because of the uh, you know delta u during the shear. So uh, the slope of this line, uh, you know, if the if a is constant, the slope is nothing but one by one minus two a. The slope of this line. So the stress paths are assumed to be linear. If uh, a dash actually varies uh, with the test, uh, with the once the test is in progress, uh, once the test is in progress, then I, uh, then uh, the ideally the stress paths uh, are curved in nature. So the effective stress paths will be curved in nature. That's what we have shown in the previous discussion. The reason why the effective stress paths are curved in nature because uh, the value of the a will not be constant. That is uh, uh, the stress, the spara effective stress, uh, the the uh, Skempton's uh, uh, pore water pressure parameter a will not be constant. That is the slope will be changing. So because of that, what will happen? Uh, if it is constant, then it is linear. And uh, if a is constant, the slope will be constant, and then this is uh, you know effective stress path. But if uh, if there is a uh, you know the if there is a, a varies with the when the test is in progress, then uh, the ideally the stress paths are curved in nature. Uh, now uh, you know uh, with the constant axial stress, once you look into it, so when you have got delta sigma, then which is actually nothing but uh, is indicated by a, and which is nothing but uh, when you have delta sigma and then no change in sigma, sigma dash effective isotropic condition and plus when actually c that is delta sigma is there that you know then a is equal to b plus c where delta sigma r dash is equal to minus delta sigma r is equal to minus delta sigma 3. So delta delta tau by delta sigma sigma is equal to minus 1 and with this actually we can say that as b caused no change in the effective stress and we can say that a is equal to c. So the effective stress path for undrained compression are same as both for constant axial stress loading as well as the constant radial stress loading. The effective stress path for the undrained compression are the same for both constant axial stress loading as well as constant radial stress loading. So here with this slide what we are saying is that the effective stress paths for undrained compression are same for both constant axial stress as well as the constant radial stress loading. So uh, when uh, this is the constant axial stress once you look into it and uh, so total stress path uh, you know sigma r then constant uh, sigma a increase then it is like this 
and when you have the unique effective stress path is actually possible uh, like this uh, with the variation of the EAF and the total stress path uh, you know total stress path sigma A constant and sigma R decrease then it is actually you know traverses like this. So influence of the stress paths on the laboratory measured undrained strengths which actually can be given uh, by uh, this particular tau sigma sigma dash uh, plot here and uh, this line is uh, kf line this line is the kf line the failure line and this intercept is kf da k dash or a according to our notation alpha dash or psi and k dash cot alpha that is this ordinate. So uh, we can actually get the uh, delta tau by delta tau by delta sigma dash as the the slope of this line so, uh, slope of this effective stress path uh, is 1 by 1 minus 2 af af is the uh, you know the, uh, the the this 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 the slope of this slope of this line at af is that uh, pore water pressure uh, para, uh, skimpton's pore pressure parameter at uh, failure af so uh, delta tau by delta sigma dash is equal to 1 by 1 minus 2 af uh, that is the slope of this line. Now uh, if you look into this uh, you know the at failure delta tau by delta sigma dash is equal to delta tau by delta sigma dash is equal to 1 by 1 minus 2 af. So uh, at failure which is like this referring to the previous figure basically for the soil with initial stress tau naught and sigma naught dash so we can write tau f is equal to k dash so k dash is nothing but this ordinate plus sigma naught dash tan, tan alpha sigma naught dash tan alpha that is uh, you know the vertical uh, axis uh, ordinate okay and um, minus 1 minus 2 af uh, uh, you know tau, tau naught tan alpha dash. So what we have written is that this particular vertical ordinate we have written vertical ordinate we have written and that ordinate is actually working out to be. Uh, k dash plus sigma dash uh, sigma naught dash tan alpha minus 1 minus 2 af tau naught tan alpha that is from the the slope is actually known to you and with that we can actually calculate. So we are subtracting we are taking the net height that is uh, you know tau f and uh, so with this we can actually simplify saying that tau f is equal to uh, c dash cot phi dash uh, plus in terms of uh, c dash and phi dash parameters. So we converting uh, from, uh, from from the uh, from the kf line to uh, the tau sigma space completely where with that tau f is equal to c dash cot phi dash plus sigma naught dash minus 1 minus 2 af tau naught divided by cosecant uh, uh, phi dash minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 af so undrained compressive strength uh, can be obtained uh, you know where phi dash is equal to 0 undrained compressive strength is equal to can be obtained as uh, you know tau f is equal to c dash cot phi dash plus sigma 1 dash divided by cosecant phi minus 1 plus uh, 2 af. So here uh, the considering the undisturbed sample initially at negative effective stress where sigma i is equal to minus u e and initially tau naught is equal to 0 uh, initially tau naught is equal to 0. So with that you know this term will get uh, you know uh, you know uh, when this will eliminate it then what we have is that. Uh, the sigma naught dash is equal to sigma i sigma i dash so what you have got that c dash cot phi dash plus sigma dash uh, uh, you know i uh, divided by cosecant phi dash minus uh, 1 plus 2 af that actually remains here. So based on the deliberation let us look into the uh, you know one problem here undisturbed soil specimens are basically taken uh, from a depth of say at uh, z is equal to 5 meters in a soft lightly over consolidated clay. Uh, for which k0 is equal to 0.7 undisturbed soil specimens are taken from a depth uh, z is equal to 5 meter in a soft lightly work on clay for which k0 is equal to 0.7 and the unit weight of the soil is 16 kilo newton per meter cube and c dash is equal to 0 phi dash is equal to 22 degrees and the water table is at uh, depth zw is equal to 1 meter and assume that gamma w is equal to 10 kilo newton per meter cube for specimens tested under a cell pressure of 40 kilo pascal assume that uh, you know sigma v da, sigma 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 v naught is equal to gamma z and uh, if af is equal to 0.8 find the undrained compression strength at cu un, undrained compression strength cu so here uh, you know af that is the effective the stress parameter skempton stress parameter at failure is given as 0.8 
So the solution actually works out like this uh, we can first get uh, the vertical stress which is nothing but uh, 16 kiloton per meter cube and 5 meter depth so it is 80 kilopascals. The effective stress because water ground water table is given at uh, 5 meter uh, the, the ground water table uh, you know uh, water table is at a depth of 1 meter. So by taking uh, these considerations what we get is the effective stress. So once you get uh, once you know the effective stress and K0 is given as 0 0.7 and the sigma v sigma dash v naught is actually 40 kilopascals. So with that what we get is that 28 kilopascals. So ue uh, the uh, we, that can be obtained by sigma dash v naught plus 2 sigma h uh, you know sigma uh, sigma dash h naught divided by 3 that is uh, you know the sigma v and plus 2 sigma h. So uh, that is uh, you know this uh, this one we are actually estimating and that is actually given as uh, estimated as minus of 40 plus 2 into 28 by 3 which is minus 32 kilopascals and tau f now is the c cot phi plus sigma uh, sigma dash uh, sigma dash phi that is nothing but uh, uh, you know which is obtained as uh, uh, which is given a, uh, which is obtained as uh, you know this one as 32 kilopascals that is uh, ue is equal to that sigma a dash that is 32 kilopascals. So cosecant phi that is phi dash is given as uh, 22 degrees cosecant 22 minus uh, 1 plus 2 into 0.8. So with this the shear strength and failure works out to be uh, 10 kilopascals. So similarly another problem where undistributed samples are taken from a depth of 5 meters in a stiff heavily work on solid clay for which K0 is equal to 1.8 and uh, because this is a work on solid clay the K0 will be high and gamma 20 kiloton per meter cube and c, c dash is equal to 5 kilopascals and phi dash is equal to 20 degrees and water table is at a depth of 3 meter and assume that gamma w is equal to 10 kiloton per meter cube and for specimens tested under a cell pressure of 100 kilopascals and uh, if AF is equal to minus 0.15 so you can see that the AF is negative here and find the undrained compressive strength uh, Cu. So the solution again uh, the uh, 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 sigma v naught uh, is actually 5 meter uh, uh, that is a unit weight is 20 so 100 kilopascals and uh, the effective stress can be obtained as 70 kilopascals and with uh, 1.8 we will be able to get uh, sigma h dash as 126 kilopascals. Similarly here now by minus of ue is actually calculated uh, where uh, the clay is more consolidated. So sigma v dash plus 2 h sigma 2 sigma dash uh, h naught uh, h dash divided by 3. So with that what we get is that minus 107.3 kilopascals. So tau f is equal to c dash cot phi plus sigma sigma dash divided by cos uh, cosecant phi dash minus 1 plus 2, 2 a f. So by substituting this phi into cot 22 plus 107 because here uh, sigma dash is equal to minus u, this minus of minus will get become press here and uh, the cosecant uh, 22 minus 1 plus 2 into uh, minus 0.15. So with that the shear strength of the soil works out to be around 87 kilopascals. So uh, what we have done is that we actually have uh, you know uh, try to reduce the discuss about in the consolidated and drained uh, triaxial test and then we actually have uh, uh, you know obtained this uh, you know uh, deliberation about uh, so then you know we also have this uh, octahedral plane and where uh, we have for if you are having a sigma 1 axis and sigma 2 axis and sigma 3 axis and then you know when when you actually have uh, this uh, the, these lines indicate that uh, sigma 3 is equal to 0 and sigma 2 is equal to 0 along this line and this uh, is sigma sigma 1 dash is equal to 0 and hydrostatic axis actually passes from the median of this that is hydrostatic axis is equal to sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 when it actually happens and, uh, uh, and uh, sigma 3 dash actually passes through this one and sigma 1 dash actually passes through this, this vertex and uh, sigma 2 dash is actually passes through this vertex. But along this sigma 3 dash is equal to 0 along this uh, you know sigma 1 dash is equal to 0 along this sigma 2 dash is, sigma 2 is equal to 0. So the octahedral plan the octahedral plan is equal to plane octahedral plane is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 is equal to constant the octahedral plane is a is very near to the uh, soil failure state. So very useful basically to derive the 
failure theories of the soil. So, this octahedral plane uh, uh, which is uh, indicated as sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 is equal to constant and uh, which is a plane uh, which is very near to the soil failure uh, and so very useful to derive the uh, failure theories of the soil. You know the uh, you know further you know sigma octahedral uh, what we can actually get is nothing but uh, sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by 3. Uh, and uh, tau octahedral the shear along the octahedral plane that means that uh, on this octahedral plane that normal to the plane that is sigma octahedral and along this that is the tau octahedral. So, we can get sigma octahedral as nothing but sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by 3 and tau octahedral is nothing but square root of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 whole square plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 whole square plus sigma 3 minus sigma 1 whole square by 3. So, sigma dash octahedral is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by 3 minus u. So, uh, and tau dash octahedral is equal to tau octahedral. So, total and effective octahedral shear stresses are equal, total and effective octahedral shear stresses are will be equal. So, uh, from the uh, uh, more Coulomb uh, yield, yield function in most generalized uh, form for the uh, more Coulomb condition of failure can be expressed as uh, you know uh, which is nothing but uh, sigma 1 dash minus sigma 2 dash uh, whole square minus uh, 2c cos phi plus sigma 1 dash plus sigma 2 dash sin phi dash whole square uh, plus sigma, one, sigma 2 dash minus sigma 3 dash whole square minus 2c cos phi plus sigma 2 dash plus sigma 3 dash sin phi uh, whole square plus sigma 3 dash minus sigma 1 dash whole square minus 2c cos phi plus sigma 3 dash plus sigma 1 uh, sin phi whole square. So, uh, the more Coulomb uh, yield surface is indicated by you know this uh, surface which is uh, you know indicated as G f uh, G f e d c b and A is the point of the uh, intersection of the octahedral plane and uh, you know the hydrostatic axis this is the point through which A through point A uh, the hydrostatic axis passes where sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 is equal to sigma 3 and uh, uh, and this is the point of intersection of the, the octahedral plane. So, you can see that these are the point of intersection of the octahedral plane. So, this is the octahedral plane and the more Coulomb failure surface is actually uh, defined or limited by this uh, G f e d c b surface. So, this is called as the more Coulomb uh, yield surface, more Coulomb yield surface. So, uh, then uh, you know different failure criterions are actually uh, uh, described. So, what uh, we do is that in the next class we will discuss uh, more about the octahedral plane and uh, uh, in, uh, the relevance to the uh, you know how this can be interpreted uh, for uh, you know the so, so called uh, uh, understanding about the, uh, the failure criterion and uh, then thereafter we will try to discuss about uh, you know how we can actually determine E for the E from the triaxial test data and uh, then we will try to do uh, some uh, example problems uh, on the uh, shear strength of the soils.